In the last video, we were doing it without really knowing it. Uh, we were saying the name of the ionic compounds, but uh, here we'll talk about it a little bit more. Uh, for uh, metals with uh, predictable charges, uh, it is a pretty straightforward naming process. So remember the metals with predictable charges were group 1, 2, and aluminum. The rest of the metals, uh, including most of the transition metals, can form uh, different charges. And so we can't really um, uh, use these rules for those metals. Uh, for metals with predictable charges, though, it's pretty much just the metal's name. Uh, plus the anion name. Okay, and the two scenarios are two things that we could run into for anions, of course, are the elements, the elemental anions, uh, which of course have the IDE stem changed, or of course, we can have polyatomic ions. And for those, we just use the name. So for instance, uh, if we wanted to name, uh, say, this compound, CAS. Calcium's a group two metal. And so of course, it's, uh, we can just say the metal name, calcium. And then the sulfur element changes its name to IDE. So that is calcium sulfide. Uh, if we wanted to say name um, hmm, SR F2. Strontium is also in group 2 and so we're just going to name that strontium. And then fluorine F becomes fluoride. All right, and then of course we could have polyatomic ions. And so let's say we have um, sodium sulfate. Sulfate is a minus two anion, of course, so that's gonna take two sodiums. We just learned how to uh, create the formulas for those compounds. But uh, naming this would be uh, straightforward. The metal name and then the polyatomic ions name. So this would be sodium Sulfate. Naming uh, ionic compounds uh, that contain transition metals is going to be a, a little bit different. Okay. Uh, for instance, I cannot just say iron chloride. because there are more than one iron chloride compounds. I could be talking about FeCl2 or FeCl3. So we need to come up with a different mechanism for naming these two compounds. And the reason why, of course, they can be two different compounds is that iron is not one of the metals that forms a predictable charge. It can do a couple of different things. So what we need for these, naming um, ionic compounds that contain uh, transition metals, is um, this mechanism. We're going to have the metal name, and then in parentheses, we're going to say the charge for that metal using Roman numerals. And then we'll have the anion's name. And again, if that's an element, we'll use the uh, uh, IDE name, so chloride in this case, or if it's a polyatomic ion, we just use the name of the polyatomic ion. All right, so most of the time, what you need to do uh, to name these properly is determine the charge of the metal ion. 
Uh, we can always be able to figure out the charge on the uh, metal ion from the anion. We know that the uh, ionic compound has to have a neutral charge. So I know that this FeCl2 has a net zero charge. Since I know chloride is in group 17 or 7A, it uh, has seven valence electrons and so it gained one electron to form the chloride minus one ion. And I also know that there are two of those. So there's two chloride ions in that compound. So overall this has a negative two charge. So what does the charge on that iron have to be to equal to zero? Since this is a negative two, this has to be a plus two uh, metal ion. Since I now know that that's a plus two iron cation, I can name this compound. FeCl2 is iron. I'm going to put the charge in parentheses as a Roman numeral. Iron two chloride. And I can do the same thing for FeCl3. Chloride still has a minus one charge. And I know overall this has to equal zero. I know that there's three chlorides in that compound. And so what does the charge on the iron cation have to be to equal zero? Well, in this case, it has to equal plus three. Plus three plus a negative three equals zero. So now I know that FeCl3 actually has the systematic name of iron three chloride. And so that's how I can tell someone that I need to use FeCl3 or FeCl2. Use this naming mechanism. If I want to use FeCl2, I say iron two chloride. If I want to use FeCl3, I would say iron three chloride. Okay. So we'd also need to be able to determine the formula from names, um, including both metals and uh, with predictable charges, as well as metals with uh, or variant, variable charges. Okay, so let's get a little practice on that. Okay, so what would be the formula for a compound um, with the name of lithium nitride? Okay, so to construct the formula for this compound, we have to know that lithium is in group one, is a plus one charge, and then nitrogen is in group 5A, let's find it on a periodic table, and we know that it has five valence electrons, it would gain three to get to neon, so that's a minus three charge. All right. So I can do this a couple different ways. I know that this is a plus one. This is a negative three. I know this has to equal zero. It doesn't equal zero now. And so now I know that it has to have three lithiums to go plus three plus negative three equals zero. Or I can even do my subscript trick where the sub charges become the subscript for the other ions. And so lithium nitride, no matter how which way I do it, is Li. 3n. Okay, so let's figure out the formula for hmm, how about um, hmm, iron 3 hydroxide. All right, since iron is a transition metal, it's not one of group one or group two or aluminum, so it has a variable charge, and that's why, of course, we had to name it with a Roman numeral that tells me what the charge is. So uh, iron has a three plus charge in this compound. The hydroxide is the polyatomic ion OH minus. And so, when trying to figure out the uh, formula for this, I can do the same type of math. This is a plus three charge. Each hydroxide has a negative one. I know this must equal zero at the end of the day. And so I need three hydroxides. Or the subscripts K 
can come down and as long as they're the low sole number this will give me the correct formula so iron 3 hydroxide is Fe O H 3 and if you remember about our discussion about polyatomic ions when they're in compounds if there's more than one of them we have to use parentheses because if I left it like uh, I just wrote it we might think that this is a compound with one iron one oxygen and three hydrogens well really we know this is a compound with one iron and three OH minus polyatomic ions and so if I put the parentheses that helps me uh, show how the correct formula of this uh, compound.